Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner and welcome to our webinar about the peak performance mindset. And it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Roberts. Mark, tell us about yourself. Yeah, I've been in sales and marketing for over 30 years and I've led sales teams both domestically and globally. And now I'm the vice president of sales and marketing for Sparks IQ. Let's talk about peak performance. What does that mean? Um, after interviewing hundreds of very successful sales leaders, CEOs, uh, entertainers, uh, politicians, uh, and the essence of peak performance is the mindset. Famous athletes, they all say, including LeBron James, that uh, it's all about the right mindset because it's the mindset that drives the skill set. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Without the right mindset, you might have a limiting belief that holds you back from your optimum performance. Yeah, let, let's jump right in into those um, limiting beliefs. Uh, what, what are some of those limiting beliefs that uh, you assess when um, uh, you do the OMG assessment? Yeah, what we have is a tool and we call it Talent GPS. And what we can do is not only look at sales competencies and motivations, but we also look at beliefs. And some of the top elite sellers in the world have very common beliefs. For example, one of the top beliefs is they don't need to be liked, they just need to be respected. As you can imagine, if a salesperson needs to be liked, there's a high probability they're not gonna ask uh, probing discovery questions to get to the root of the buyer's problem. Uh, the other one is talking about money. A very simple concept, but a lot of people struggle with it. If you think about it, Gerhard, you know, I, I go back to when I was a child, and I think every child asks their parents this, you know, hey, dad, how much do you make? And what did they say? We don't talk about that. That's rude. Uh, we were taught that it's rude to talk about money. So we shouldn't be surprised that salespeople have a limiting belief to talk about money. Well, thank you. Let, let's talk about the agenda. Uh, sure. We're going to talk about what is the mindset? How does it impact your sales results? We're going to talk about how to set no limit goals and perform above your present capabilities. We talk about the four levels of a salesperson's mindset and we talk about the inner CEO that controls the mindset. How can you manage your mindset operating system for peak performance? And then we share some practical tools for getting there. So I grew up in Salzburg. So my mindset is European. Uh, and when I came to this country about 40 years ago, um, it was a big shift in the mindset because uh, the culture is different and I had to learn the hardware, I had to adopt. And I had a lot of teachers, you know, I've, uh, uh, we have done cover stories with uh, Bill McDermott, who was the CEO of SAP, now he's the CEO of ServiceNow. Um, we did a cover story with Richard Branson, a fantastic uh, entrepreneur that runs about, what, 276 companies. Then Mark Benioff, or Michael Dell, Maria Sharapova, Mark Cuban. Those are all people who, you know, billionaires that uh, have achieved a high level of success. We also did research with the University of uh, Massachusetts at Amherst with Dr. Epstein, where we discovered that we gave them access to about 40 people that made over a million dollars and compared them to about 200 people who made between 150 and $250,000. And the result of that research was that although they have the same very similar educational backgrounds, the uh, peak performers, they had more revenue, more income, better life satisfaction, better career satisfaction. They're happier in their personal lives, in their marriages, and uh, they're more realistic thinkers. And Dr. Epstein says it's clearly the mindset the way you think about yourself, about your capabilities and your probabilities. So success is the result of your thinking styles. So here's where everybody uh, wants to be on the, everybody's on the lower left-hand corner and everybody wants to go to the upper right-hand corner and achieve, go achieve goals. And then come the mindset barriers. And the key is to reframe your mindset and realize that 80% of success is about breaking through mental barriers. 
what was the number one barrier that you had to overcome to become successful? Probably I had a self-limiting belief that came out of my early childhood education. I wasn't mentally um, strong enough, not smart enough. And that was pretty much from back in the 1960s when, you know, they would, they would identify people as slow and then they would put you in a special program. Uh, the difficulty was I was later tested and it was found that I'm actually too fast. But that self-limiting belief, you know, if you don't believe you're smart enough, just imagine how much that could limit your interactivity with CEOs, C-suite. And once, however, I found out that the real issue is my brain just works so fast and draws relationships uh, very quickly, um, that belief, you know, went away. And the difference between a successful person and the others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but rather a lack of will. As you can imagine, salespeople are amazing at interviews. However, will they sell? The onus is on us to try to figure out what our salespeople are thinking. What is it that's going on in their minds? We can quiz them and test them for different competencies. We can observe them in the field for mastery of different techniques. But where we need to start spending much more time is in their mindset. It's the same in a golf game. If your mind is on the score, you miss the shot. If your mind is on the, the other people on the, in, in your foursome, then your focus is not 100% on the task that you want to accomplish. So it's not just thinking, but it's also focus. So that brings me to the, to the next thing, which is a study that I found by the National Science Foundation. And they discovered that we experience about 60,000 thoughts a day. And 80% of those thoughts are negative. All we need to do is reprogram our minds and be more positive. So when you think about the self-talk, you know, I'm not qualified to call on this prospect, or I can't win this account, or they get angry at a client, or I can't beat that competition, that is all trash talk. And we can bring that trash talk under control. In 2019 was the first year more people missed their goal than attained it. Sales achievement is going in the wrong direction right now. And we need to make some adjustments. And here's that wonderful research by uh, Dr. Lozarda. And uh, she said that uh, in order to flourish, meaning you make progress, you need a ratio of three to one positive experiences and positive thoughts versus negative thoughts. So remember that ratio three to one and check yourself throughout the day whether you have a positive mindset. The lady that has done a phenomenal job with the mindset is Dr. Carol Dweck. And she divided the mindset into two parts. And essentially, a growth mindset is that I believe that I can grow through challenges. Whereas the fixed mindset is saying I have limited capabilities and when a, a big challenge comes, it overwhelms me and I cannot do more. Yeah, and what you're going to find is market-leading companies now have really embraced this. And at one point, sales teams, the majority of their training was just when they were onboarded. However, today, market-leading companies are making training a continuous process, continuous learning. They're constantly assessing their teams, and they're actually creating individualized learning plans to help people have that growth mindset, constantly challenging, constantly learning new things, and evolving to better meet the needs of their customers. There's a book uh, called Before Happiness by Sean Acor, and he has done some research that says that salespeople with a happy mindset sell 38% more. Wow. So the big question is, what makes you happy? Mark, what makes you happy? Helping people. Um, I tell people I've been in sales for 36 years and I haven't sold anyone in the last 20. What I do is I help people. I help people solve problems. That makes me very happy. People with a happy mindset have more energy. They're more productive. They're more creative. Dr. Marty Selig, Seligman from the University of Pennsylvania, he found that optimists outsold pessimists by 21% in the first year, by 57% in the second year. And here's the interesting part. 
those people that he trained did not necessarily have the sales aptitude that the company was looking for. Making yourself happy and thinking optimistically is a key driver of productivity. So your mindset reflects the way you sell. So we can look at different mindsets, the transaction mindset, the relationship mindset, the value selling mindset, and the strategic partner mindset. The transactional mindset is what? Well, that's where you either sell or you're being sold. Um, you're driven to close. It's about closing the transactions. Buyer need to be told and then they can be sold. And typically what you'll see is salespeople talk way too fast. They talk way too much. Uh, they're poor listeners. And it feels like a high pressure situation. And the next level is the transactional mindset, the characteristics of the belief system. When you analyze it in the transactional sales model, the salesperson comes first. Yes. And uh, your duty to succeed uh, at all cost is, is the number one goal. How the customer feels is imp unimportant because there's so many out, of, out, out there. Uh, there's so many opportunities for them to sell. The next level is the relationship sales model. And uh, boy, you have a positive mindset about people and uh, you, th you believe that relationships are the key to sales success. But the downside is with that belief system that some salespeople say, if I'm not liked, I'm a failure. All those tough questions about decision-making authority and money are avoided because their fear, if they bring it up, they're going to be rejected and that they're losing right. the sale. So let's talk about the value seller, Mark. Uh, what is your, uh, your take on that? Well, the value seller is about proving the ROI of the investment that you're asking your buyer to make. Selling is about creating value for your customer. So the beliefs are solving a problem is key to the success in this belief and asking the right questions leads to the right solutions. However, uh, you need behaviors like really good discovery and diagnostic skills. You need to have critical thinking and business problem solving skills, which often you know, require business acumen. And then you need some ability for some differentiation. How does your solution differentiate compared to other solutions in the marketplace? By and large, you know, value sellers have a much better performance than like what we just discussed, relationship sellers. And then we have the highest level. That's the strategic partner. And that is more a, a mindset of somebody who wants to improve other people's businesses. Um, they believe that the trusted partner wins. And they want to create massive value at every step of the way, from the opening to the close. So those are top sales performance behaviors you're going to see from those people. They are customer advocates. And they get a lot of repeat, repeat business. So, Mark, how should sales managers that are listening to, to this use that information and uh, challenge their own belief system and look at uh, their sales process and see whether they're congruent? Well, one of the things you can do is just ask yourself, you know, in your approach, are you a strategic advisor, strategic partner? Are you relying on relationship? And really start doing some soul searching on why. For example, the statistics are, you know, most salespeople don't feel comfortable calling on the C-suite for one reason or another. However, if you ask C-suite executives, 85% said they would meet with a salesperson that brought them a strong business case. So there's a big disconnect in the mindset of most salespeople. When it comes to selling, uh, setting goals, Mark already mentioned earlier, what is the why? You know, why do you want to reach that goal? And what we found is that the bigger the why, the bigger the try, the easier the how. And that is true in, in any uh, endeavor, whether it's sports, if you don't have a big why, uh, you're not going to achieve your goal. Uh, there's a, a wonderful story about um, Sarah Blakely. Uh, she was listed uh, on, in Forbes magazine as one of the billionaires. She's worth $1.1 billion, according to them. And uh, she committed to no limit thinking. 
And here's how. And it was early on when she was 16, her best friend died in a car crash. Her parents got a divorce. And she got a set of tapes by Dr. Wayne Dyer, how to be a no limit person. And it changed her life. She listened to that uh, recording about 400 times, according to her story. She was implanting in her mind the idea that there are no limits to anything. So when she had the idea for Spanx, uh, everybody says, it's not patentable. You know, you can't get a patent for that. And so she w w went to, from one patent lawyer to another. And finally, she got a patent for that. Second, they said, you're not going to get manufacturing. It can, cannot be produced with the existing equipment. And then she got a manufacturer to do a prototype. And then they said, well, you're not going to get financing for your business. And uh, she went to a lot of people and, and, and do it a lot of no's. And then they told her, uh, you can't get distribution uh, because you're competing with so many other existing brands and solutions. And she got distribution and she made it happen. So here's the thing. I go back to Dr. Carl Dweck. When you have a growth mindset, then you believe that you can get positive results no matter what. The question is, why do most people not believe enough in themselves? Mark, what's the reason? Well, I think what you're touching on is something we call in sales grit, uh, for the lack of a better term. It's, it's how you stick to, to some, something. And, and they quit just before they're about to have a breakthrough in most cases. And I think it's a combination of frustration. I think it's a combination of, uh, like you in, indicated earlier, we have so much distraction, so many thoughts coming in and out of our heads, so much um, coming into us now through our mobile devices that we move on to the next thing too quickly. We're trying to do too many things too quickly. And we need that, um, that uh, figure it out factor is what we call it in our assessment. And we can actually predict whether a salesperson is going to have that grit to stick it out or are they going to give up too soon? Another good thing that uh, we found in our research is that if you have an accountability partner, you have a 30% higher chance of reaching your goal. So the idea is that if I have a goal, I want to talk to Mark on a weekly basis and say, hey, Mark, this is what happened this week. Those are some of the obstacles uh, I'm running against. Um, do you have any ideas? And this is the progress I've made. But it's more than just that accountability conversation that counts. What happens is what we found is that your self-talk during the week changes because I need to talk to Mark by the end of the week. And I better decide whether I want to make those extra calls this today or whether I go after that prospect or whether I ask somebody for referrals. So I can hit my numbers because when I hit my numbers, I have something to brag about when I talk next with Mark. That accountability partner, if in a sales situation, can be their manager. Uh, I think managers need to evolve into more of a coaching role. And you're going to see this more and more and more and more people are going to be talking about the need for coaching versus managing. And it's about accountability. It's not about uh, micromanaging. It's not about just managing the most recent deal or the biggest deal, but it's really about making your salespeople accountable. In essence, there is something up here, the prefrontal cortex right up uh, on your forehead. And that's the inner CEO. And that's your, the commander in chief of your mindset. And you wanna use that. Um, so there are three competencies. We need to know if they have the will to sell, if they have sales competencies, and then the sales DNA. That's their belief systems. Are they rejection proof? Just imagine the results that a salesperson would have if they're rejection proof. If a rejection does not set them back, but actually lights a fire in them. Uh, for example, when I hear the word no, what I'm actually hearing is not yet. I just need to do a better job of educating, better job of understanding, uh, maybe peeling the onion a little bit more because obviously I haven't communicated the value that the buyer wants to buy yet. So explain your I am uh, uh, approach 
And uh, let's, let's construct a, a practical example. So, you know, what happens frequently that salespeople don't make their numbers, not just at the end of the month, but not uh, at the end of the day. They're not reaching out um, to enough people. So let's say the salesperson says, um, I am stressed out and I can't make more calls. Uh, would that be a good, uh, good excuse? It's a couple of things to me. One, it's an accountability problem. Uh, second, it's a time management problem. So there is a skill that we could teach there. Uh, but it's really a mindset thing. My, my belief is if we really got that person to dig a little bit deeper into their I am's, which is an exercise I, I often do with salespeople where I ask them on a piece of paper, write all your I am's. And they start out with, you know, I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a, you know, a husband and I'm a salesperson and, and they go on and on. But then they're going to have a couple negative ones. And what I ask them to do is circle the negative ones because they were just a moment in time judgment. It doesn't mean that they're true. Um, however, we need to identify those limiting thoughts once again. And once we find those limiting thoughts, we need to reframe that with positive thoughts like you indicated earlier. Share the, the, the forgiveness magic here because you have a great formula when somebody says, I'm not good enough. What you need to do is identify your I am's, those limiting beliefs, and then you need to reprogram. And what I was taught to do is I forgive myself for judging myself as, in this instance, not smart enough to talk to CEOs, for the truth is I'm very successful when I meet with decision makers. I hope you can actually feel the difference in those conversations. One has a lot of energy and positive thought and optimism. The other is a limiting belief. And what and, you need to do is find your two or three things right. that are limiting beliefs. And right. when you even hear them in your mind, right. repeat that mindfulness right. about who you really are, because that's the truth. Adjusting the mindset and shifting that mindset is, is fundamental. If you say, I am uh, uh, insecure, you know, those core beliefs, uh, that I believe that I'm responsible for my own happiness, um, would you agree with that? Are you Absolutely. Or is the world responsible? Or I believe that I'm responsible for designing, shaping, and leading the life I want. A lot of people say, no, it's not possible. But in the United States, it is possible. Or I believe that I'm unique, special, and lovable, capable of achieving great things in life. So those are some of the beliefs that you can choose and adopt and let go and forgive yourself for believing anything else that is not in line with reaching your goals. Because your beliefs need to serve you to reach your goals, not hold you back. So with that, that said, we have a mindset retreat in Orlando on March 13th to the 14th uh, in 2020. And if anybody wants to get information about that, uh, you go to mindsetscience.com forward slash retreat and get a, a brochure. I've read some of the reviews from people who've attended your events, and it's a life-changing event for people. I invite everybody to join us, uh, download the information. And if you want to learn more about OMG, how do people get in touch with you, Mark? Yeah, they can reach me with my email, which is mark.roberts at sparxiq.com. You can also find me on LinkedIn and um, I'm here to help everybody. Happy selling. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, I see you soon at one of our conferences. Thank you, Gerhard.